In today's A-level IB biology video, we're going to be focusing in on water because water is a major component of cells. It's the most abundant liquid on earth and it basically underpins all biology. So we're going to look at its structure, the fact that it has hydrogen bonding, and we're gonna look at specific terms such as specific heat capacity, latent heat of vaporization and cohesion tension theory. And then in a separate video, we'll look at the importance of water to living organisms. But this is mainly a chemistry video, really, in a biology format. So here I've drawn three water molecules. And water, as you know, is H2O. So every single water molecule consists of one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. Now, notice that despite the fact that each water molecule has no overall charge, what you find is that the oxygen atom has a slightly negative charge and the hydrogen atoms have a slightly positive charge, and that's what this weird little symbol means here. The fact that each water molecule has a slightly positive and slightly negative end means that you can describe it as having two poles, or dipolar. And um, as we know in all science, the opposites attract. So actually, as you look at this, you can see that the slightly negative oxygen is attracted to the slightly positive hydrogen here. The slightly positive hydrogen is attracted to the slightly negative oxygen here. And we call this interaction and attraction hydrogen bonding. Of all the weaker intermolecular forces, and if you do chemistry, you'll be aware of dispersion, London forces, hydrogen bonds are quite strong. Yes, they're only one-tenth of the strength of a covalent bond, which we know from GCSE and IGCSE chemistry to be an extremely strong type of bond. But a hydrogen bond is a fairly strong attraction, and it actually causes the water molecules to stick together and provides water with its pretty unusual properties. So what sort of strange properties does this hydrogen bonding provide water with? Well, first of all, the boiling point of water is higher than you would expect. So without hydrogen bonding, you would expect water to be a gas at room temperature and therefore life on Earth as we know it would not exist. However, hydrogen bonding makes the boiling point of water much higher than you'd expect and therefore water is a liquid at room temperature. And if we go all chemistry for a moment and we examine the term specific heat capacity of water, well, what this is, is it's the heat energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. And if we link this with water, what we're basically saying is the heat energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius is much higher than you might otherwise expect. And so what does this really mean from a biology point of view? Well, what this really means is that water acts as a great buffer against sudden temperature changes, meaning that you can create aquatic environments which are pretty temperature stable. So if I translate what that really means, it means that Many environments which exist, which are water-based, such as the seas, streams, rivers, lakes. Now, the organisms inside these environments are extremely sensitive to temperature changes. So if water wasn't this great buffer, if it didn't have a high specific heat capacity, then what you'd find is as soon as it got hot, the water would get extremely hot. And so all those aquatic animals would probably die. Then all of a sudden, if there was a drop in temperature, then the water would get very cold and all those aquatic organisms would die. So this high specific heat capacity of water underpins why these areas of water make such great environments for animals to live in. Next up, the latent heat of vaporization of water. Now the latent heat of vaporization is the amount of energy required to evaporate one gram of water.
This becomes a biological matter when we think about how many animals keep themselves cool, and that is through sweating. So evaporation of water from sweat acts as an effective cooling means because body heat is used to evaporate the water. And then lastly, cohesion and surface tension of water. Cohesion really refers to water molecules sticking together due to their hydrogen bonds. And if we look at this from a biological point of view, let's examine the xylem vessels, which are found within the stems of plants. Now remember that these are dead cells which form a continuous column, effectively like a drain pipe, which are reinforced with lignin. So you have these mini drain pipes within the plant stem. And we know that xylem transports water. Now, each water molecule is attracted to another water molecule due to hydrogen bonding. So you end up with a column of water within the xylem. Okay, so I don't know why I decided to draw this in purple, not that helpful. But if we take a closer look and we look at what happens within the leaf, so remember that there are stomata present, which are small pores, which water escapes from. Now what you find is that as each water molecule escapes, you don't just lose one molecule of water. Because they're all attracted to each other, you find that the neighbouring water molecule follows and then the one attached to that follows. So you end up with this chain which gets drawn up the xylem and it actually provides a very effective method for helping water to move both through the plant and into the roots at the base of the stem. And we actually call this transpiration pull. So I'll make a note of that now. So as water molecules leave the leaf by the stomata. We call this transpiration. More water molecules are drawn up from below. This is due to cohesion of water molecules as a result of their hydrogen bonding. And then lastly, let's look at surface tension. So what you find is that water molecules, when they meet the air, tend to be pulled back into the body of water rather than escaping from it. And this produces something similar to a skin. And it's actually strong enough to allow very small insects to effectively walk on water. And if you have a look at a pond, you'll see some little pond skaters, which will just be sitting on the surface of the water. They won't be falling through. So water molecules which meet the air tend to be pulled back into the body of water rather than escaping. In this way, the water surface acts as a skin, supporting small organisms such as pond skaters. Let's try a terrible drawing of this now. So here's our water and then a pond skater looks a little bit like a spider. Oh my goodness, terrible. But it's actually standing on top of the water rather than sinking through the surface. 